Hey everyone, welcome to the Growth Paramedic channel. This is the Pharmacology class, or also known as the Pharmacology series. And today we're going to kick off this series talking about morphine, or also known as morphine sulfate. So let's write that down on the title. Morphine slash morphine sulfate. Now, if you're currently studying at paramedic school or in medicine or anything in the uh, medical field, you will know that morphine is a quite quite a common drug that is used in the field. And so this is, I think, it's a really good one to start off with and really no down pat. So the main goal for this session is to understand the definition of morphine and also the pharma pharmacodynamics, so how the drug works in the human body. Okay, dynamics, and then also some precautions that we should be aware of when administering or thinking of administering morphine. And this is kind of how we're going to structure all the, the rest of the uh, pharmacological classes. If you do want me to talk about a few more things, um, please do comment on the um, on the videos and I will if, if there's enough interest, I will add some more things to the content of the uh, videos. But let's start off with this for this one. So let's begin with uh, the definition of morphine. So morphine sulfate is, perfect, is a narcotic, narcotic analgesic. Now, that may look like a bit of a menacing name, but if we break that down, narcotic means uh, or refers to a psychoactive psychoactive compound with sleep inducing and euphoric properties. If I can spell it properly. <laughs> now, this is associated with opiates, opiates, or opioids, and morphine is part of the opioid branch. So, so from that, we know that morphine then has sleep-inducing and euphoric properties, and we'll go through that in the pharmacodynamics. But that's the main kind of definition of um, narcotic. Now let's go to analgesic. Now that's a, a lot less harder to understand or a lot easier to decipher. Analgesic basically refers to acting to relieve pain. So we now know that morphine is a psychoactive compound with sleep inducing and euphoric properties and it's acting to relieve pain. Now from there, can you kind of guess what morphine is then used for in the pre-hospital setting? Correct. If you said it's for pain management, you are 100% spot on. So morphine is an opioid and it's used principally by paramedics in the pre-hospital setting for pain relief. So management of pain. Let's write that down. It can, though, in certain situations, because of its pharmacodynamics, be used for sedating effects. So sedation. But generally, as paramedics, we will use this medication to manage patients' pain and not try to sedate them. There can be in times where you use morphine co-currently with midazolam, but we generally, for me at least, I'm not going to be covering that side of morphine. I'm mainly going to be covering the side that is related to pain relief. Okay, perfect. So now that we know um, morphine is for pain relief, we need to dig a bit deeper and we need to know how it works in the body. So let's just move on to this side. Now, how it works in the body, this is called pharmaco, pharmacodynamics. Dynamics. And that is basically what the drug does to the body. Now this is really important to understand because medazina, oh, sorry, morphine does have a few um, effects on the body and this can relate to quite a few things and it can cause 
if not um, administered properly or to the right patient, it can cause adverse effects. So this is an important aspect of knowing your drugs is the pharmacodynamics. So uh, let's begin. So morphine, I'm going to write again, just make it a bit easier to, to kind of digest. Morphine is a principal alkaloid of opium. I have to minimize this about a bit more so the writing isn't as okay. That looked a bit yucky. Let's re let's let's rewrite that again. So alkaloid is yeah that looks a lot better now. Yep, alkaloid of opium. So morphine is principal alkaloid of opium, which has agonist activity on mu, delta, and kappa receptors. So I'm going to put it on the side here. These are three receptors you really need to know um, when it comes to morphine. They are the mu, the delta, and the kappa receptors. Okay, keep that in the back of your mind. So these receptors, so these receptors um, which are located in the central nervous system, they are known as opioid receptors. So these three receptors are opioid receptors. So if you know, morphine is from the opioid family. So it will interact with these opioid receptors. So in a sense, if we really try to simplify this for you, all you need to know is that when you administer morphine to a patient who's having pain, um, it will interact, interact with these three receptors with these three up here remember those three and these three receptors will have an agonist effect now when we talk about an agonist effect or agonist in general it means to activate the receptor to produce a biological response. So let me visualize it for you. So let's just say this and these other ones and this one as well. These are the mu, the delta, and the kappa receptors. So when morphine comes along, and let's just say morphine is that and that, when you administer morphine to a, to a patient, when these come along, they will bind to these receptors. And when they bind to these receptors, it activates a biological response. And we're gonna go through that biological response very shortly. But that is what we're trying to get when we're giving morphine to patients is this biological response. Now, what that really, um, what that really means is um, thinking. Okay, we'll go down here. Okay, let me rephrase that a bit more. What is really important to note with these opioid receptors is that they're located in the central nervous system. Location. So that includes the brain and spinal cord. The administration of morphine and its subsequent agonist effect, as we mentioned what agonist does, will result, so administration of morphine will have 
an agonist effect on the three receptors, the three opioid receptors. And this agonist effect will result in, now this is super important, please write this down somewhere. This will result in an alteration of processes that affect an individual's perception and emotional response uh, to pain. So I, I really need to highlight this for you guys because it's super important, super important that you understand that it does not make the pain disappear. The pain is still there. If there's a trick, if there's something causing a painful stimuli, like a pin needle pushing on the skin, the pain signals is still going to be sending to the brain. But when you administer morphine and it react, it it, it it causes an agonist effect on the three delta, the three receptors in the central nervous system. That will alter the processes in the central nervous system that allow a, uh, an individual to perceive pain. So this kind of um, change in a, in a person's ability to know to feel the pain will result in reduced pain um, um, experience or it will cause a pain relief. And that is what we're trying to do when we administer morphine. That is the key principal reason why we give morphine is for that pain relief effect that it has on an individual. Oh, sorry. Let me um, I just want to really highlight that it, it is pain relief. Now, along with that, there is, unfortunately, with the alteration of the processes, there are a few adverse effects, or there are a few other effects that um, can happen when you administer morphine. So let's look at other effects. When morphine reacts, or when, morti when morphine, morphine interacts with the mu, the delta, and the kappa receptors in the central nervous system, this can cause respiratory depression, vasodilation, of the blood vessels and a decreased or decreases in gag reflex. It also slows AV node conduction and this is known as the vago tonic, vagotonic effect. Perfect. So that, they're the main effects that morphine can cause. And let me just go and rephrase the, the main pharmacodynamics. If you haven't really understood what I said now, it's kind of been a bit mumbled. I do apologize. But let me just simplify it right now for you. When morphine is administered, it will interact with these three receptors and these three receptors are opioid receptors and morphine is an opioid so the mu the delta and the kappa receptors will be will interact with morphine and this interaction in the central nervous system will cause a patient's ability to perceive pain um, to be altered so they won't be able to um, feel the pain that they had um, uh, after uh, will feel the pain as much as they had after they received morphine. So there will be pain relief. But because of its interaction with the central nervous system, it will cause respiratory depression, vasodilation, and all the others that I've mentioned. Okay, perfect. So we're kind of nearing the end now. We're gonna go now to the precautions that I like to um, mention when administering morphine. Um, this isn't an exhaustive list, but these are the main ones that I want you to be aware of when you when you do administer morphine, and that's with elderly patients. So the first one is elderly patients. So with elderly patients, because of their advanced age, it usually means that these patients have poor 
hepatic and renal health. So they're not able to absorb morphine as easily as a normal healthy bean and they also tend to have more potential um, for adverse effects of morphine. So they can tend to have um, a worsening drop in blood pressure with morphine compared to those of a more healthy younger age. And it is noted in elderly patients that respiratory depression occurs more frequently in this demographic. The next one in the precaution list that I want you to be aware of is patients PT with hypotension. Very important one guys, very important. So let me just go um, define, if you don't know what hypertension is, hypertension is basically patients who have low blood pressure. The administration of morphine may worsen hypertension because it has a vasodilation effect. And we mentioned that in the pharmacodynamics. So what happens if you cause a vasodilation of the blood vessels? The blood pressure can drop. So be mindful, particularly in these patients whose ability to maintain adequate blood pressure is already compromised, that you don't worsen the situation. Your goal always as a paramedic is to do no harm. And if you're causing harm by um, lowering the blood pressure more and causing worsening perfusion of the organs and of the um, of the ability of worsening provision of the body in general, you are going against the strict um, core value of doing no harm. So just be mindful of that with patients with hypertension, that you are watching the blood pressure at all times if you are uh, considering administering um, morphine. The next one on this list is, let me go here. Oh, uh, So it looks like my pen's actually run out, but I'm just gonna verbally say it to you guys. The next one on the list is respiratory depression. I probably put like a, a some text here um, because my pen has just died out. But the next one is respiratory depression. The three receptors we mentioned earlier are located in the central nervous system, so the brainstem. The agonist effects cause causes inhibition of the uh, the ventrolateral medulla. This results in depressed respiratory generation. So be mindful of that with those patients already on the lower end of respiratory rates. So we know that the normal rest rate is 12 to 20. So if someone has a rest rate of 10 and you're giving morphine, just be a bit mindful that that can cause a respiratory depression. And then lastly, um, again, not an exhaustive list, but one I really want to stress out is um, paramedics should be aware of conditions where morphine administration could hinder your treatment. A really good example that I know of is spinal injuries or head, in, head injuries, where if you administer morphine, that altered pain perception um, could mean you're unable to properly assess the pain of these patients. And, or, or basically the patient won't know where the pain is. So if in these patients, you really need to know if there is pain or tenderness in the, in the neck area. And if you give morphine, they can't properly give you the proper kind of pain result. So. Just be mindful of that when you're going to administer morphine in those kind of patients. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you found that useful. And we'll be looking to do um, one weekly, one medication weekly. If you guys really enjoyed it, put a comment, give us a like. And if you want more information from these kind of pharmacology classes, please, by all means, get in contact with me because I love doing these kind of things. Have a great day and uh, I'll see you next time.